Hey everyone, welcome back! As you know, I am still live on Twitch with our never-ending subathon. This video was meant for April Fools, but I was unable to test it properly nor had time to edit due to other commitments. You wanna know what this hero is? We were gonna make an Inaros, but with abilities for April Fools, as in another frame to do what Inaros does, not die but have actually useful abilities. Ironically, I think this is also what Nightmare was using as a theme. He ended up with a build that actually worked well and wasn't a meme. Here's the problem. The same thing happened to us. This stupid build that's meant to simulate an Inaros actually works like an Aros and is useful to the point that it's a viable Steel Path DPS build. Simply put, Inaros is a bag of health. He doesn't really need to do anything special except suck up damage like a sponge and not die and then heals it all off. Well, the natural choice for me was a frame with easy lifesteal, but we needed something that can actually survive incoming damage. That's where parasitic armor came in, an unconditional boatload of armor source from removing your shields. Also, per an update a little over a month ago, you can no longer gain shields through any source when parasitic armor is active. I know you were able to before, but this video is made post-patch. We also needed a frame where parasitic armor is kind of stupid on. A frame that normally can't health tank but barely benefits from health tanking. Health tanking lets you run Hunter Adrenaline and Rage to get energy back for abilities, which is useful because Harrow actually has useful abilities, unlike Inaros. The other reason why I chose Harrow is simple and rather stupid. Thurible gives infinite energy on kills. Tanking with Hunter Adrenaline also gives infinite energy, except doesn't need kills. How do we make Harrow do nothing different and still get infinite energy? Subsume Parasitic Armor over his 3 and use Hunter Adrenaline. Stupid in concept, and obviously it works to a certain extent. Except then I realized that Harrow tanks extremely easily this way because his 2 not only gives you absurd fire rate and reload speed, but also innate lifesteal. It also has ridiculously long duration to the point that you might as well have forever buffs. Penance gives duration buffs for your reload speed, fire rate, and lifesteal based off of current shields. Parasitic armor gives armor based off of modded max shields. It ignores overshields and ignores current shields. This means you always cast penance before parasitic armor, and you need to disable parasitic armor by uncasting if you want to reset penance early. The amount of buffs penance gives, and the amount of armor parasitic armor gives scales off strength. So this will be a rather important stat today. Also, Lewis Prey added Arcane Blessing to the game. This is important because it frees up a mod slot on Hero so that we can mod more into our other stats. We don't need Energize since we are a walking energy generator, meaning Blessing can now fit. The concept is simple, get Reload and Fire Rate buffs, have Pog Lifesteal, face tank everything because every ounce of damage you do heals you, and have a boatload of armor, health, and damage reduction. Spray my Ignis. Inaros, but with abilities, right? Covenant lets our Ignis land red crits, and the weapon reloads stupid fast, as well as dumping ammo fast to shred enemies. Let's take a closer look at that build. Enemy radar, because armor doesn't matter. We're using a slash Ignis, otherwise you could take corrosive projection if you go the corrosive heat route. But I like knowing where my enemies are. We don't need more damage, and we don't need shield gating, since parasitic removes it all and we actually want to take health damage to restore energy. Prime Shirt Footed is pretty self-explanatory. Prime Flow lets us bank because Harrow innately has plus 100% energy every time he spawns in or revives as a passive. Natural Talents for Comfort, which could be replaced with two Archon Shards and freeing up a slot for Lasting Covenant if you so wish. Redirection to get more shields from Parasitic, scaling up to approximately 3000 armor on this build for over 90% raw damage reduction. We also have Adaptation for another roughly 75% true effective damage reduction, making this hero have roughly 98% overall damage reduction at all times. Arcane Blessing bumps us up to 1500 health when it's maxed out. Health orbs will rain down due to synth set from your Panzer spreading viral quill, so it should only take a few minutes to max this out. A double slot Hunter Adrenaline and Rage for even better energy economy, but if you're fine with only having 45% conversion, you can drop one of these for Lasting Covenant and keep Natural Talent instead. Prime Continuity allows Penance to cap out near 100 seconds duration when you cast at the 3880 shield cap of this build. Easy to get by spamming Penance when Parasitic is inactive. More health tanking means easier to activate Arcane Avenger for a free flat plus 45% crit chance. You can skip this for whatever arcane you want. I just chose it for prettier crit colors on Ignis. 
Ignis build is a generic viral hunter munition setup. It only has 51% crit chance, and the red crits are coming from Covenant, adding a flat 200% crit on headshots. On body shots, you have 51%, plus 50% from Covenant, and another 45 from Avenger for mixed yellows and oranges. Vigilante supplies for a crit bump, as well as ammo conversion too, since Ignis chews through it. Merciless, since we kill with Slash, but fodder units probably still die easy. The reload bonus is mostly relevant since Penance adds such ridiculous amounts of reload speed, you'll barely notice Ignis reloading when it's active. Primed Bane for 2.4 times more damage on Slash, and if you want to go the raw damage route, then just mod Corrosive instead of Viral, and slot Hammer Shot instead of Hunter Munitions. Killing Acolytes can get annoying with the Ignis, so we can just bring another weapon, such as a Glaive Prime. Generic 2x combo heavy detonation build. We have Volatile for plus 3 meters blast radius, Corrupt Charge for 2x damage scaling, and Killing Blow alongside Amalgam Organ Shatter for plus 120% heavy windup speed. Attack Speed mod is optional and Double Sacrificial for maximum crits. Prime Smite again for 2.4x damage on bleeds. If you really want even more damage, you can drop Primed Fury for Power Throw. Panzer, also generic build. Its only purpose here is to spread viral quills to proc synth set for Petasis to drop health orbs for your arcane blessing. Otherwise, Martyr to keep you alive, Devolution to keep itself alive, a radar, and a vacuum. That's it. Using the build is very simple. You load into the mission, you spam Condemn until you have 3880 shields, you cast Penance, then you cast Parasitic Armor, cast Covenant if you want as needed, and maintain as needed if you have Lasting Covenant equipped. Otherwise, if you need to reset Penance, uncast Parasitic Armor if it is still active, since it will prevent you from gaining shields back. Then, just spam whatever weapon to your heart's content. Forever Reload Buffs, Forever Fire Rate Buffs, Forever Attack Speed Buffs, Forever Lifesteal Buffs. A boatload of armor to back it up, adaptation, and a big health bar. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible, like I've done with Citrine's Last Wish. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis, as well as the earliest Duviri content. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? Now that's it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time!